Good evening, everyone. So this is day two of session uh, Cyber Gym Bootcamp. Previously, we have discussed about uh, fundamentals of the cyber which uh, you can get compromised and what is the difference between network security, cyber security, and uh, uh, how, um, what are the preventive measures you have to take uh, to prevent yourself from any type of cyber attacks. So this is uh, day two of the session. So today's ag agendas will be, uh, we have, to, uh, because uh, we already have looked at that, what is the cyber security and uh, what is hacking? Now, uh, there are several types of hackers. So uh, we will discuss types of hackers, then uh, stages of hacking, uh, then few common terminologies that uh, I want to tell you about, uh, uh, which will uh, we're going to use those terminologies, uh, all those terms, uh, technical terms, uh, in upcoming sessions. Then footprinting and types of footprinting, footprinting information and footprinting practicals. Uh, we will see some uh, lab and tools and techniques uh, to for uh, uh, for the footprinting phase. Now, now there are several type of uh, hackers we have, but majorly uh, there are six type of hackers. Uh, in, uh, like uh, first of the black hat hackers. Uh, these are uh, those persons who just uh, perform hacking uh, with the purpose of any personal grudge or uh, because of their uh, ransom profits. But uh, they always uh, perform the hacking uh, to uh, just uh, to make the organization uh, uh, somewhere uh, affect the organization in a way uh, so that uh, their uh, value get uh, reduced, uh, their public image get reduced, or uh, they can uh, just uh, perform hacking to uh, for an individual to exploit their uh, vulnerabilities after uh, and then uh, blackmail them for the ransoms. Uh, so these are the bad guys, basically. Then the second one is gray hat. And uh, uh, before gray hat, I want to tell you that what is a white hat hacker. So white hat hackers are those hackers who are good guys and uh, they just perform all the hacking activities with the permissions. Uh, like uh, uh, we perform pen testing. In pen testing, what we do is that uh, uh, for an industry or for an organization, we uh, uh, try to gain the access in their network or the computer systems. Then we find the vulnerabilities and make the report of that vulnerabilities, uh, report the authorities of that organization that uh, you have uh, the loopholes and the vulnerabilities in uh, your network in this, this, this area, and you need to patch it up. So uh, white hat hackers, uh, uh, perform uh, any uh, action or any hacking uh, with the permission. Okay, and then gray hat hackers are the type of mixture of white hat hackers and uh, black hat hackers. Sometimes they behave as a good boy, sometimes they behave as a bad boys. Like uh, they uh, sometimes they perform hacking uh, for uh, uh, with the permission and uh, sometimes they perform hacking without the permission. Uh, they can, uh, their methods and uh, techniques can be uh, sometimes uh, follow a black hat hackers uh, way. And then the uh, fourth one is script kiddie. So script kiddie is someone who like just uh, uh, using tools and techniques by seeing all the uh, tutorials and uh, reading blog posts about the uh, tools and something like that, but they don't know exactly that what is happening, that uh, if we are, uh, they are running the uh, network scanning uh, to find out the ports, uh, to find the vulnerabilities, okay, some tools, they have used it, used them, and then they have found some results. Okay, then they don't know exactly that what it is, what is the result, how we can uh, use them uh, later or uh, so, uh, like that seems. Now, the fourth one is state-sponsored hacker. Now, state-sponsored hacker is someone who is uh, uh, appointed by the government. Sometimes uh, uh, government, uh, sometimes, uh, not sometimes, usually uh, government uh, appoint a lot of hackers under them and uh, they appoint just them to uh, know the uh, enemy country or other countries' uh, military operation plannings or the space operation plannings or uh, 
whatever the uh, critical information about the other governments uh, so that they can uh, boost their armies or any type of against uh, attacks and something like that then uh, there are hacktivists so these are guys are uh, basically who uh, just want to uh, ruin the image of any political uh, websites something like that like uh, they just uh, their main agenda is to uh, uh, diminish the uh, image of the uh, political parties or uh, like uh, sometimes if you heard uh, any of you heard that uh, uh, recently uh, some of uh, uh, Indian hackers uh, hacked the sites of uh, Pakistan government website and they posted uh, some of the message on their website uh, government website with the red in, uh, with the Indian flag. So these type of activities when we uh, when a person perform uh, just to uh, show that uh, okay uh, you uh, even your government is not secure like that so uh, they comes under the category of hacktivist now these are the few common terminologies i want you to guys remember because uh, uh, these are the basic terminologies we uh, generally used in the hacking domain or the security domain so first is the hack value now what is hack value that it is a simple notion among hackers uh, hackers use them uh, usually that something is worth doing or is interesting it means that uh, if a, a target is uh, they selected their target but why do uh, they want to select only that particular uh, target because uh, they have uh, some sort of curiosity or uh, they have already uh, gained some uh, Maybe they have uh, this type of uh, interest in them that uh, okay, uh, if we if we have this organization and maybe we can uh, uh, retrieve any type of that critical information further, we can sell on the dark web. So that that hack value after uh, something that we gain after the maintaining access, gaining access, and uh, whatever the information we retrieve from the victim, and we sell it then its value is very high that it is uh, when we say that data is very critical it means that uh, data is highly confidential like a uh, hack value of any military operation that is very high and uh, hack value of any uh, big organizations new business plans is also very high so the second uh, word is vulnerability a vulnerability is something um, just a common term which means that existence of weakness uh, that uh, uh, lead to the access of the system like uh, you have a, a, a computer system that you used or whatever uh, device like uh, uh, mobile phones tablets or the uh, laptops desktops or whatever you use maybe you have some uh, you are using some softwares that uh, have some uh, security issues they are not coded properly or maybe you have some ports open uh, they are not secured maybe your firewall is not active so these are all types of um, you can say uh, um, loopholes uh, comes uh, lead to the vulnerability that uh, makes your system weak so that uh, if anyone uh, find out that okay you have a vulnerability then they can uh, if um, they can possibly attack your system and uh, maintain the access in your system so the third word is exploit. So exploit means basically um, using the vulnerability. Uh, we exploit the vulnerability uh, uh, to breach in the IT systems or the networks or, of the organization or something like that. Because uh, hackers firstly found the vulnerability, then they exploit it, and then uh, together they both uh, make the attack possible. Okay. So. Um, the uh, th fourth word is threat and threat i think uh, usually uh, everyone knows that is something dangerous which is not uh, suitable for our system uh, in networking domain if we say not suitable uh, for the uh, cyber world of uh, anything like that okay next one is payload so payload is something that a uh, uh, part of a uh, like uh, in a software uh, payload we can say that it is a part of a code which contains malicious uh, code or uh, uh, which also uh, performs some malicious activity when executed. Um, for example, um, sometimes you get uh, uh, advertisements like uh, your phone have a virus, please download this uh, software and run it uh, in your uh, phone. 
when you install it execute that file you now what happened is that it contain uh, with all the uh, software it contains some part of the code that is uh, designed as a worm as a, or a trojan or a, so uh, that designed as a malware and uh, it performs in uh, malicious activity so payload uh, basically refers to that part of the code which performs the malicious activities the next one is ports so this term is very important uh, ports uh, ports are like uh, in simple language uh, ports are like uh, like just the gates of your system from which uh, uh, when you connect to the system so when you connect to the system or a network so um, uh, you are exchanging information now when you exchanging the information that information is uh, several types okay there are some types of information uh, or the file systems you can say that there are uh, when you receive any mail the ports are different to receive any mail uh, you can say that gates are different of your system uh, from the network uh, to uh, enter that type of messages into your system okay uh, the normal uh, website contains uh, use the http uh, at ports uh, okay uh, if you uh, transferring any file over the network or uh, you are sending uh, any file to the other computer so that uh, port is uh, ftp protocols uh, port you so there are different type of gear, uh, ports uh, that we basically use to connect to the network and all the data that come in and come out of your system uh, whenever you uh, perform any type of query uh, to the server or uh, something like that so all the data exchange uh, 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 happen uh, along uh, happen from the ports okay uh, so next word is daisy chaining now daisy chaining is something like that um, when uh, attacker perform any attack on the network now and maybe uh, he pass on the fire, uh, all the bypasses all the firewalls now he gain the system access note uh, he all obvious uh, it's obvious uh, that uh, when after gaining the system he um, uh, inject some of his malicious code or you can say malicious software in the network now what happen is that uh, when he enters that network and uh, run his code it uh, may happen that uh, uh, after the uh, running his code uh, that code gets spread to the uh, other uh, other computer networks or maybe the other computers that is connected to that network or you can say that uh, um, uh, basically, uh, it means that uh, for gaining the access, he had to find some vulnerabilities because first step is to uh, find some vulnerabilities. So uh, whatever the uh, vulnerability is there, it may be possible that that vulnerability is uh, in all the computers that are connected to that organization's network. Okay, suppose there is an organization and uh, in organization there are 50 computers. Now one of the computers have some type of vulnerabilities and uh, uh, hacker has found it and um, he just uh, gained the access of the system and using that exploiting that vulnerability now um, after accessing that system uh, uh, instead of doing all the um, um, scanning parts again and again uh, he can also use that same information that there uh, because uh, there is always a possibility that if uh, one computer system has that same type of vulnerability then maybe other computers that are connected to that network have also that same vulnerability. So what he do will um, he use that same information of the vulnerability in, and uh, uh, for the hack of every computer in that network and injects his malicious codes and then uh, your systems or network your whole uh, organization's computers get compromised. Now the next word is bot. Uh, I think everyone knows what is bot. Can anyone uh, tell me what is bot? It's a kind of software code that uh, acts as a user or a human. Okay, very well. Uh, so uh, bot is a, a software exactly that can be uh, controlled remotely to execute something or just uh, or the bot just can do uh, any automated uh, predefined function that he has been assigned like uh, uh, in the previous session we have uh, seen the example of the ddos attack and um, when we perform the uh, ddos attack 
we just simply deploy the uh, usually hackers deploy the bots uh, multiple bots to uh, generate a request from the same server until the uh, server's capacity get collapsed and uh, the uh, server get down so bots are that uh, uh, automatic um, he is right abhay is right that uh, they act as a human and impersonate as a self uh, uh, authentic uh, requester from the server and perform these type of activities now the next word is uh, vulnerability assessment so uh, firesack uh, uh, our company also performs vulnerability assessment and pen testing also so vulnerability assessment is something uh, whenever any organization come to us and uh, say that uh, can you please uh, check our uh, network or our computer um, computers that is there any uh, risk of any type of cyber risk we have so what we do is that uh, uh, we just scan the vulnerabilities but not basically exploit it okay and uh, in pen testing what happen is that uh, a pen testing is similar to vulnerability but there is a minor difference between them so in, pest, in pen testing uh, what we do uh, we just uh, um, uh, like a vulnerability assessment we perform uh, scan all the vulnerabilities that are present in the system we hack the uh, we hack uh, their systems and then we gain the access of the system then we exploit those vulnerabilities and after uh, exploiting those vulnerabilities we just um, report the organizations authorities that uh, this is uh, the type of vulnerabilities you have and these are the possible attacks and we have performed it now uh, we also gave them uh, ways to patch it up and uh, also uh, tell them solutions to how you can uh, save yourself in the future from these type of uh, vulnerabilities okay so uh, is anyone have any doubt regarding these terminologies or is it clear to everyone Okay, I'm assuming that it is clear to everyone. Yes, yes. The next uh, thing is that we have seen in the previous session that what is hacking. Uh, can anyone tell me uh, what is hacking? We have discussed previously. What is hacking in your terms? It's Smriti, Arushi. Do you have, uh, do you remember what is hacking when we say uh, we hack the system? Anything? Any unauthorized activity can be a simple definition of hacking. Okay, so hacking is just basically uh, when an individual or a group of individual perform uh, some activities uh, and uh, uh, with, uh, with the help of tools and techniques of their own and uh, just uh, gain, try to gain the access of any other uh, individual system without their permission and then uh, and they can retrieve any sensitive information and then use it for their own purposes okay so when we perform hacking we um, there is uh, these five steps uh, that we generally uh, look out for uh, the hacking that we can say that these are the stages of the hacking that is what is reconnaissance with or footprinting we also call it footprinting second is scanning and third is gaining access Fourth is maintain access, then the fifth is uh, covering uh, access. So the first point is footprinting. Uh, what we can say that it is the first step, uh, first step of the hacking, or we can say that it is a, it is a preparatory step uh, in which an attacker uh, uh, tries to gather all the information about the target before um, before uh, plan his attack or before executing the attack, he just uh, try to um, acquire all the single information because no information is uh, um, waste. Every information is uh, important at some instance of time. So um, uh, like uh, uh, whenever uh, in uh, whenever in war happens in uh, in the old times. Uh, the two uh, the whatever the two kingdoms are there they uh, 
this uh, uh, they send their spies uh, 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 to uh, spy uh, spy out and uh, uh, they ask them what are the uh, number of our uh, men in their army in the other enemy's kingdom or something like that it's like that we want to know our target because uh, when we narrow down our target scope uh, from the other peoples uh, maybe it's possible that uh, um, he have some uh, habit or uh, he ha uh, when we say that uh, um, footprinting it means uh, i can say majorly the digital footprinting there is also physical footprinting but majorly we are going to talk about the digital footprinting so uh, we try to just basically uh, gain all the information about the target that what type of website he usually uh, uh, he usually uh, browses what type of content he like to see on their social media and what type of email uh, what type of blog posts they read what type of newsletters uh, when you hack the email you can also see that what type of newsletters uh, he received and then you can uh, simply perform a phishing attack uh, similar to that newsletter so it's like something that uh, you want to just basically plan your attack uh, you have to plan your attack uh, but firstly you have to know your enemy then you uh, you can find his uh, vulnerabilities okay now the uh, second phase is scanning now in scanning we look uh, we all the open ports and services and all the vulnerabilities any system can have so we have discussed now what is ports so it may happen that some of the ports are available they are not guarded in our system and uh, we can just simply uh, inject some files uh, through uh, the ports by exchanging information with the victim and he doesn't know uh, that even so uh, we scan all his networks and uh, all the ports of his system and um, we try just trying to uh, find the vulnerabilities okay now in the third phase is that the gaining access gaining access it what is uh, happen uh, after performing uh, these two up steps uh, that is for printing and scanning uh, they both uh, we use them both to plan our attack okay so to gain the access we plan our attack uh, just basically outline our attacks uh, plan and then uh, we perform the attack um, and uh, attacker breaks into the system uh, using the tools and various tools and techniques whatever the vulnerability he has scanned in the previous step uh, he used and ex basically it exploits that vulnerability and gain the access of the system and uh, the fourth phase is maintaining the uh, access so in maintaining the access after you gain the system now you have uh, you have uh, attacker can install uh, some type of if they if he wants just to make your system um, uh, compromise um, or your network damage instantly he can uh, insert some malicious code that uh, uh, like wanna cry uh, when we say wanna cry ransomware attack uh, which is happened in 2017 we have talked uh, about it previously uh, that uh, uh, that is the type of attack that is uh, that have an instant type of effect like um, uh, when the uh, hacker uh, gain the access of the system he just injects its code and after injecting of code his system get locked up and demands for the ransom so and sometimes it also happen that uh, that a hacker doesn't want an, any uh, instant damage of his system and uh, in an article i have read that uh, it is the average time uh, to know any victim that uh, if he has been get compromised by any hacker it is like a 6 month average time um, sometimes they do see the symptoms about the uh, that their uh, data is also compromising or uh, that the traffic is very high from their system but they do ignore if the person is not from the basically cyber security network security domain who doesn't uh, um, or we can say who just don't uh, that victim is just don't uh, aware about the latest threats and uh, what are the uh, latest um, possible attacks uh, yeah, he can uh, be a victim of so um, he does, just doesn't know that his system get compromised so in maintaining access uh, when the, there is no instant effect the hacker just simply install some kind of uh, root kits or uh, we can say that backdoors into your system so that in future um, when he wants to retrieve any uh, information from your system he just uh, don't uh, have to follow all the uh, 
previous steps like uh, footprinting, scanning, and gaining access. You just uh, call out that backdoor uh, again and retrieve the information, then uh, again uh, close that backdoor, and he can use it repetitively until he wants, okay? Or until the victim get uh, realized that, okay, he has been compromised and patch it up. Now, the fifth phase is covering access because it is important uh, to always cover your tracks. If you guys perform any hacking activity, uh, it is very important that uh, because hacking is illegal without the permission. And uh, if you have uh, tried uh, tried in and uh, don't cover your tracks uh, uh, very well, you can get uh, 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 you can come under any legal, uh, uh, we can say legal authority uh, decision uh, for uh, illegal activities, okay? Um, you have to face some charges uh, along also. So covering access, it means uh, when the uh, hacker uh, perform all his, uh, whatever he wants to do, uh, retrieve all the um, record information from your system, uh, then he, uh, when leaves your system, you just erase all the data about him because um, basically he just connected to your system with the ports, okay? Uh, with ex some exchange of the information into your system, okay? So uh, after in that information of the system, so uh, like we have previously any uh, talked about it that any packet uh, always contain about the IP address and MAC address of your system, okay? Any uh, information of data packets, it always uh, contains some, ty uh, some type of digital footprints uh, of yours. So um, basically hacker perform, uh, it is all those logs or all those data from the system uh, to get himself safe, okay? So now we've... Uh, we have to discuss today's main agenda is to discuss the first phase of the hacking and we will see some lab practicals after that. So uh, footprinting is just basically a collection of every possible information regarding a target or the target network. So this information is the first road for the hacker to crack any system because um, to um, damage your enemy, first you have to know your enemy to fight uh, them for, okay? So there are two types of uh, footprintings, that is active footprinting and passive footprinting. So in active footprinting, what happens is that uh, you perform footprinting by getting in direct touch with the target machine. And in passive footprinting, uh, all the uh, collection of information uh, of the victim's system, do it from the remote distance, or you can say uh, you are not in a physical proximity of that system. So, uh, for example, in active footprinting, uh, so there is a, a, a major difference between them uh, is that in passive footprinting, logs are created, okay? Log, it means when you get connected to their network, okay? Because it, uh, we are talking about the uh, remote access. Uh, so, when you connect, get connected to that network, so obvious, uh, obviously, your logs are going to create there. And so, logs are created in uh, passive footprinting, which is... Uh, sort of a riskable thing for the hacker. And um, in active footprintings, there is no logs are created. It just uh, hacker use your uh, public uh, so, uh, social media platform. He can use your public social media platforms or he can use uh, search engines like Google, DuckDuckGo and Bing or, uh, to scrap about your information, to uh, know you, what is your routine, uh, wherever, uh, whatever the type of uh, sites you follow and uh, that sort of thing. So logs are created in uh, passive footprinting and uh, logs are not created in digital footprinting. So we can say that active footprinting is uh, more safe than passive footprinting. So now uh, we will see that what type of information that we can gather uh, from uh, the footprinting. Why are we doing the footprinting? Okay know the opting system of the target uh, because uh, if we have the information about the operating system of the target, whether the victim's uh, system using the uh, Linux uh, operating system or Parrot operating system or just Windows or uh, it, it's Mac OS. So uh, we can um, then scan all the vulnerabilities. Uh, we can possibly uh, uh, 
protect the vulnerabilities uh, so that uh, okay uh, he is using that uh, operating system and that operating system has this type of vulnerabilities and i can use it okay he can uh, plan his uh, code uh, malicious code and whatever the uh, backdoor he wants to create according to that opening systems security levels and this type of things now the second one is ip address information then the domain names and subdomain names so and uh, domain is, domain names is just basically the uh, you can say it's an address of any uh, website uh, but in a natural uh, language natural language it means an english one because it is uh, if suppose uh, we have google and uh, it's not uh, it is usually in its um, main ip address form uh, numeral form you can't remember uh, numeral forms because humans are not very good in remember a uh, long sequence of numerals but they can remember easily all the natural language that is uh, english language uh, names so uh, we gave some uh, natural language names to those uh, ip addresses uh, of the search engines and uh, websites so these are the domain names and then uh, security configuration of the target machine or email ids uh, so uh, email ids means if any organization we have to uh, attack any organization and uh, we want to know that uh, what are uh, who are the employees of that organization and maybe one of them employee uh, is uh, in a riskable state his system is in a riskable state that we can uh, access the network of that organization from his system so we can um, perform uh, then we can uh, uh, plan some type of phishing attack to that employee and uh, and we uh, to perform the phishing attack basically we have to send uh, send them uh, email and we can know those email ids through the footprinting passwords sometimes passwords are also there server configurations and job information now job information we are talking about here an employee so uh, have any one of you idea that uh, how job information will help us uh, in planning of the attack how a person's profile uh, that what it is he doing in his professional life uh, can uh, give us information uh, that uh, about him so that uh, it can be usable for us uh, employee can have uh, credentials and logins for the company and uh, employee also have the uh, level of authorization how much data he can access uh, organizations have different type of levels of uh, authorization it's like if he is a senior employee then he can access all the data if he is uh, he's a junior employee then he can uh, access pa uh, part of the data not all of the data there are many type kind, uh, kind of information that uh, job employee uh, can get from the uh, profile and many things are there i think yes um, you were uh, very well correct uh, correct about that so job information uh, let's just we say that uh, um, i want to uh, target an individual person now uh, i have to um, perform some uh, active footprinting uh, that um, i have tried some um, search engines to retrieve any information about that individual so when uh, i got to know that uh, he is a security analyst okay then i will have the idea that okay he just know about the threats and risk and he must have been the high level of security so it will be not easy to attack my uh, uh, to perform any type of attack on his system because uh, his security will be tight okay and uh, if we we can see that he is just a uh, uh, suppose a, a person from an agriculture industry and he is active on the internet in the cyber world and uh, he have some uh, good um, he may be have some interesting information or we can say that the hack value is uh, uh, can be good of him, from him so uh, we know that uh, maybe he is not from the technology background he is not uh, related from sort of any type of organization who gives these type of education and things so it's easier uh, in some way that uh, we can plan our attack according to them so and uh, whatever uh, whatever the points uh, abhay has said it's also correct uh, we uh, in a organization domain in a narrow domain when we say that we can uh, see that uh, 
what are the access level of that employees uh, uh, because uh, in previous session we have talked about the cia triad which is confidentiality integrity and uh, access in so uh, in the we uh, integrity uh, we sorry confidentiality we have uh, seen that uh, we have to uh, restrict some kind of uh, information uh, from all the levels of employees we can't uh, 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 what we can say we can't uh, uh, give all the uh, because uh, in an organization there are a lot of levels of employees is there and uh, some of the informations are very sensitive, which is only accessible by the board members and some in type of information are only accessible by the low uh, level um, employees of the organization. So it is possible that uh, uh, if we know the job profile, uh, we does uh, have to know the uh, level of him uh, in the organization and uh, then we can uh, estimate the hack value uh, from that person. Now the uh, we have seen that what type of footprintings are there, what type of um, information we can get some uh, from the footprinting things. Now let's just uh, look about some of the things, um, techniques and tools by which you can perform footprinting uh, on people's. So uh, basically, this is the footprinting uh, using Google Docs. Now, uh, whenever you search in the Google, mainly. Most of the people have uh, this tendency or uh, we can say that habit that you just uh, you just type anything like uh, uh, you can see hacking a word in the uh, new search okay but uh, in the normal uh, searching you get all the type of contents like images videos and um, maybe it contains somewhere the uh, pdf files also but you have to check all the websites and then uh, it just takes uh, gonna a lot of time now google docs is something that uh, uh, minimizes uh, gives you a way to um, sort of a more precise way to perform the searching uh, in the um, Google uh, search engine. Uh, now, after perform this, uh, these are the uh, extension that we used with our query to specify or uh, to search out to narrow down the result of our searching known as docs we commonly call as docs i want to know information about the hacking word but i only want to know that uh, that information should be in a pdf format okay so i have just typed my uh, target information that is hacking that i want to know then I have entered the uh, use this uh, term file type and then colon uh, that is to just basically define whatever the type of file I want to uh, see. You can use here the video or um, instead of PDF, you can uh, insert the uh, images like that. OK, so now you can see that all type of results I have got here is just the type of PDF. If you can see uh, there is a blog uh, which is written as PDF, which indicates that these all type of in uh, uh, search results have the PDF form. Okay. Another uh, Google Doc that is, if I can see, site PC Council Doc. Now I just uh, I think I entered the site type and the ethical hacking uh, organization. So now organization is called certification for the ethical hacking. So if I want to see the result that uh, um, only related to the uh, website uh, of the uh, as of this domain. So if you can see not any other uh, content or not any uh, other website who contain these words. So because uh, normally what web crawler will uh, do that uh, while searching your query, he will match uh, all your words and um, to its database and wherever the, those words are has been used, uh, he will 
give back those results to you okay but using these type of docs you can uh, narrow down your searching and if you can see that these are the all the website i have here uh, they are related to ec council org that uh, ilabs.org ec council.org this is the main site and may, these are also the subdomains we can see that um, subdomains a sort of type then uh, we can also say if you see use this door uh, in url admin and uh, you can see uh, that here uh, whatever you can have the results of all the types of uh, login uh, we can say uh, login panels of the uh, secure um, login uh, pages of the organization uh, wherever the admin uh, login has been used uh, login pages are present or uh, from where uh, employees can admin uh, uh, for their organizations and also like sort of Thank you, Nitesh, sir, for sharing me this query. So uh, I have used that in title query. Uh, so in title, what uh, it will do that in any type of uh, all the databases, wherever the contains index of PAN card, which is the PAN card details. Uh, so uh, it will uh, give us back the result of all the types of, uh, um, we can say that index of uploads, PAN cards, uh, name of the last modified parent directory so it will give us the information about the user's pan card uh, wherever the internet it has been um, we can say that publicly available and uploaded okay so these are the indexes of the uh, aadhar cards or the child enrollment aadhar cards something like that okay so uh, we can also use like if we can use uh, in title uh, normal word not uh, uh, these type of words so it will give us the uh, result that whatever the um, we can say whatever the site he uh, uh, and uh, whatever the pages web pages have uh, uh, word in their uh, title uh, we will uh, get back When we use this uh, type of query, we will see publicly available, not secured CCTV cameras around the world. Go to this website. We can watch all the CCTV cameras that are publicly uh, available and not secured in their live streamings. Like uh, this is the camera recording of the uh, from Mumbai and this is uh, from the Delhi and uh, from Boyser and Pithoragar. So uh, these are all the unsecured camera uh, cameras which are available uh, on the internet like uh, uh, it is a camera from a uh, hyderabad and uh, so uh, you can use these type of if you are wondering uh, to uh, to want to choose any target so uh, what's better than uh, uh, looking into the people's daily life visually so that is uh, what care surveillance camera information can do for you we have also the websites like uh, this is the uh, traffic cameras uh, which are publicly available, uh, available of the city of the Salem. If you can see that this is the uh, 17th street camera here we have and um, if you can see that that is the next uh, traffic cameras we have here then this is another lo location uh, police road uh, in the same city salem so these type of uh, 
publicly cameras you can access them and uh, get the ip addresses of those uh, cctv cameras and you can have them uh, perform any sort of you can plan uh, like uh, if you can see that uh, so uh, using google docs you can just basically perform a uh, um, law of uh, searching for your target to gather the informations and just to narrow down your um, what we can see, narrow down your scope, uh, just to dis uh, discard any type of irrelevant information or whatever, uh, maybe you can get any sort of vulnerabilities in just uh, this phase also. Now that uh, another uh, tool we can use, uh, uh, is it's basically a website that is a Google Hacking Database. You can see that um, these are the, all the information that are uh, somewhere publicly available and uh, which have uh, contained some type of informations uh, about the like here government site in title of APK. So maybe informations about uh, that uh, URL admin file types, Excel is. So uh, maybe uh, it contains the admin type of uh, admin details, uh, admin login details. Uh, and uh, like if you see can database password, file type, ENB. So you can also download a lot of uh, file types uh, from here. It it will uh, give us, uh, show you that like, uh, if you can see that uh, this is the URL and it contains the pages of the login URL, uh, login portals. So, uh, these are all types of files that you can download and further uh, use for you uh, according to your uh, authorization. And it is not illegal. It's just publicly available and uh, it is provided by the Google just to uh, make their search strategy better. But uh, we as a hacker can use this for the uh, information gathering. Now, the another tool that we can use is the Napalm FTP search engine. Uh, so FTP is something that file task uh, transfer protocol. Uh, so what it uses that whenever you you file from one computer to another computer, uh, and it happens on the server. So, so somewhere uh, in the servers are not secured. Those files are then get publicly available, and uh, on this platform you can uh, get those uh, files of uh, like if you can see in the screenshot I have taken that. Uh, it is a file from uh, Microsoft Authentication Library, and these all the all of the files are in format. Of, you can uh, will see that it, these all the files in of uh, Python three format. Uh, let's just see. This is uh, how the uh, page look like uh, we have here, and if we search. Uh, we will get all the type of um, we can say um, files uh, that has been trans uh, transferred over from one computer to another computer over the servers and uh, somewhere they are dumped uh, publicly availability uh, they are publicly available and you can see all those type of um, um, files here and maybe you can just um, go through all the files or maybe you can just uh, luckily find out in any information uh, which is critical and essential, so uh, you can use it later. Now we have the next one is IoT search engine. So anyone know what is IoT? Uh, familiar with the term IoT? Internet of Things, I think. Yes, and what it is? So IoT are, uh, we can say uh, internet of things, uh, basically means uh, if you heard about the uh, Google home appliances that, uh, or um, if you can see that uh, in your Android TVs, they are just uh, get uh, basically controlled by the uh, your uh, mobile phones. Or uh, if you have the uh, 
smart uh, electronic lights in your home and you can get controlled it by the and even uh, a few type of um, few companies also provide uh, 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 ACs also uh, who have uh, smart ACs we can uh, say by the Reliance and something uh, Reliance company uh, by which uh, you can just turn it on and turn it off uh, before coming into your home without physically uh, turning on the switch by your phone and if they connected to your uh, Wi-Fi network okay so all those devices which can controlled by your Wi-Fi and that uh, and have the access uh, by your you can control them from your phone so these uh, type of devices come under the iot things okay so attackers use this uh, tool shodan which is in search engine to scan out all the iot uh, devices that are available uh, across the world available across the organizations and uh, uh, it also the IoT devices from the different organization like a lot of companies like Amazon, Google, they all give their uh, IoT devices and wherever they are used and publicly available, you can see that. This type of showdown search engine is here. So what uh, this search engine will do, its web crawler will uh, crawl all the databases and from the world and give you the details about the also the security levels and the ports, uh, whatever the devices are used. If you can see that there is a home uh, and uh, that is using uh, any uh, in type of device, which is from the Amazon Incorporation in United States, you can see that uh, you, it is using this port, but it has the security of SSL certificate, secure so uh, socket lock certificate, and um, it is using uh, this server from the Amazon and uh, installed on uh, this. So these type of things, uh, you will get the all type of information or IoT devices uh, around the world. And uh, from the Amazon, if you can search from the Google, uh, you will then get the result of all the all IoT devices uh, from the Google. Uh, maybe you can uh, narrow it down further. And uh, you can also, uh, if your victims have some, uh, you know that he is using uh, some IoT devices, you can uh, gain, uh, retrieve the information about that IoT device and you can hack it uh, to perform or uh, gaining the accesses in his home. Now the, uh, the next tool, uh, which is coded in uh, Python 3, the harvester, and attackers uh, use this tool uh, to perform enumeration on different search engines, uh, email addresses important, which uh, found all type of uh, information uh, like uh, if you want uh, if you want to just uh, uh, use a single platform to gain all this type of host email address uh, about a one uh, organization's email address or a person ip address you can just enter it here and all the information will be available now i will just on my parrot machine to show you the harvester Is my screen visible to you all? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now uh, I am using the VMware workstation. 
So VMware Workstation, what it will do, it just uh, give me a virtual space in my physical system to install another type of operating system. Okay, like uh, uh, in my system, I have uh, uh, originally installed Windows 10. I'm using for daily purposes, but for the uh, security or uh, for the pen testing and uh, hacking purposes, I use a uh, uh, Parrot machine. So if, uh, but I don't have any other desktop. So if I want to use two different type of uh, uh, OS, we can say that Linux, if you want to use Ubuntu or Linux uh, or Parrot uh, for other type of activities, you can use these type of virtual machines. Uh, I have, uh, I'm using VMware and in market, there are also other virtual machines. Okay, so, um, you can uh, use those virtual machine and what it, it will do, it just uh, divides your uh, physical uh, resources, what, uh, physical resources, I mean, say your hard disk space, your RAM space and uh, the network you are receiving, it just divide and just make a uh, sort of a virtual, another virtual computer in your uh, one physical system. Okay, so uh, VMware workstation, uh, uh, do that type of uh, thing because uh, uh, if I uh, I'm using a Parrot machine and uh, I also want to use the Windows machine. So uh, if if you also want to use the Linux machine for your skill enhancing and perform pen testing activities, you can also use VMware Workstation to just um, form out uh, any type of virtual um, uh, you can say virtual desktop according to your configurations and settings. And uh, if you can see that I, uh, it is indicating that uh, it is using a uh, network adapter uh, for accessing in information, the hard disk uh, type of uh, 64 GB. So these are the type of things. Uh, it also inherits uh, real tech integrated webcam uh, that is uh, physically available in my uh, system. And now the Parrot uh, OS is in, uh, it's like a Windows, a normal OS, but it is uh, more of a design to do the pen testing things. Like uh, uh, this is the Parrot, uh, Parrot OS we have. And for the privacy uh, surfaces, or we can see that if you can see that here in the pen testing um, column, we have all the tools. Like if uh, we are right now talking about the information gathering, you can see that uh, Parrot also uh, gave a, uh, lot of tools uh, pre-installed to uh, uh, information, uh, to gather the information. Like uh, you can see that network and port scanners are uh, options are here. These are the tools uh, from, you can use Nmap and uh, to scan the network. We will see, uh, use these uh, tools in the next uh, session for the scanning network. And if you can see root analysis, then to uh, vulnerability assessments, uh, we can see uh, when we find the loophole and uh, uh, we uh, to scan all the vulnerabilities or you can say uh, to scan the weaknesses in the system, then exploitation, uh, exploitation tools. And then if you can see password attacks, if I want to do any type of password attack on the uh, like local attacks and offline attacks, online attacks on any sort of uh, thing, like uh, it's a brute spray, uh, uh, tool which can uh, you can inject some list of the passwords and it will automatically hit and try every password in the setted URL admin URL. Maybe you got lucky if you have the common password and you can uh, break down that uh, password. Now, if you can see that wireless testing uh, tools uh, for the sniffing and spoofing. So we have talked uh, about the middle in man uh, previously, uh, a type of attack. We, uh, so basically, we can sniff into another's network. You can see that digital forensic, uh, forensics and reverse engineering. So these are all the type of, uh, uh, you can say, uh, uh, tools are already installed in our uh, system uh, so that uh, we can just uh, perform sort of activities. Okay. Just one
Is my screen is visible to you all now? Yes. yes. Okay. So coming back to the point, we were talking about the harvester and uh, the harvester is a tool uh, from uh, a common tool from where you can get uh, information about like uh, IP addresses or a host uh, or website host uh, address or a server names uh, from a one single domain. So it is a tool which is developed in Python 3. Now you can see uh, I'm using the parrot terminal here. Now I'm using the sudo su command. Uh, for the administrative rights and then we'll use um, so i have choose uh, one website that is a umd.edu it's an education website then 200 nb so um, when I uh, here, uh, I have performed uh, just uh, call the, the harvester, which is you uh, keyword to uh, call. Uh, it is a whole query to perform the, uh, um, to start the tool. And uh, D is the uh, specifier to, uh, after which we can specify our uh, domain name whatever the domains we have uh, used. And then we have the list of, uh, we can, uh, okay. Uh, so there are a lot of search results also we have. And then, and we want to uh, limit our results up to uh, 200, uh, 200, uh, 200, number of 200, uh, we don't want a long list. And then uh, we were searching in the uh, Bing browser. Okay, we can use the Google browser also. We can use the DuckDuckGo also. So currently uh, no emails are found for this website. Let's try some another website. Um, like www.fireshark.io. Am I writing the very light? So for our company, there are no uh, available uh, details on the Google, uh, on the Bing. Let's try the Google. So currently, uh, we also don't find the IP addresses and email found. So basically, it is not available yet. Uh, we can try try another website. Just one of the tools to gather the information. There are every, uh, other tools also. These are the two major uh, browsers uh, being and Google uh, normal person can use. So right now, uh, no informations are there, but uh, we can also uh, test other uh, tools also. So let's just see another tool now. Coming back to our PTs and uh, the next thing is that if you want to know the uh, information about your OS, okay. Uh, whatever the uh, or victims OS, sorry, so whatever the type of OS, whether he is using the Linux OS or he is using the Windows or he is using the Parrot security, um, you can get um, maybe you can uh, those information are available on the search engine which is census. Let's just see. Okay, time.
query in the in your browser you see that a uh, lot of uh, devices are there which uh, are using the uh, microsoft uh, host uh, services uh, which are hosting by the microsoft uh, whose vendors are the microsoft you can see their ip addresses and what are the um, you can see their locations are uh, and um, also the corporation what are the type of uh, services they are using uh, Let's just try another uh, website we can see. Mm, like Amazon. These tools that we are uh, gonna discuss, uh, they just give us the, um, some sort of information that we can use uh, somewhere. Like they are using the uh, 440 protocol. You study the protocols deeply, you will get to know that uh, uh, how to scan those protocols and what type of vulnerabilities you can perform from uh, from those protocols, okay? So like this, uh, if you're using that, uh, here is an IP address of a uh, system uh, which are using um, the Amazon Windows services and it has the Linux uh, OS installed in his system and uh, its location, it's in South Korea. So, uh, and it's the corporation names. So these type of things, are. Uh, so, uh, you can get uh, from the results that what type of OS you are using or uh, if you can see what type of, uh, like you can see here the Tencent. Uh, Tencent is a famous company. I think you all will all know that. And uh, it is uh, from China. And uh, so you can use the census uh, to get to know the information about IP addresses and all things. The second, we have the, another tool which is known as Sherlock. So uh, Sherlock in real life uh, is a person who is a spy. And um, uh, personally, uh, Sherlock is my favorite character also. So what uh, similarly in real life, uh, Sherlock also perform uh, all the uh, spying things. Uh, you can say that if you want to gather information about a single username, you can enter that username uh, in the Sherlock, like uh, for example, uh, if you want to know the information about uh, Satya Nadella, who is currently the CEO of the Microsoft, you can uh, just uh, enter his name and you get all the URLs and website wherever his uh, user's name account was logged in. Maybe uh, you can find, uh, if you're lucky, you can find any uh, portal, you know, website, uh, wherever he is logging and uh, that website contains any sort of vulnerability. So it will leave to you further information for that. So let's just see the Sherlock. Again, my parrot terminal and then CD Sherlock to go in the uh, Sherlock directory. Then we call this command Python 3 Sherlock.py. And suppose I want to, uh, what is Python 3? I want to perform the uh, this tool on my name. Like, make sure we show. Now it, it analyzes all the <laughs> results uh, from all the, uh, you can say, uh, Web uh, using all the web crawlers, all the uh, browsing and uh, websites uh, which are available on the uh, internet, and uh, you can see all the accounts that are now on the name of Diksha Mishra. Sometimes user also uh, uh, see the uh, their URLs uh, available like on the Flipkart like sites also. If we get those type of sites, you can, he can get his username. Then obviously you can. Uh, uh, do shopping from his uh, basically you get a uh, logged in into his profile and you can do perform of shopping something like that 
so these are all the results and all the platforms uh, from this username maybe it's me or it's uh, another person from this name but it just de basically demands um, searching uh, with this username from all the uh, website sources so it's the tool that is the sherlock tool so let's just see another Twitter for deep analysis about the user activities. Uh, when I say the user activities, it gives us username that are they following. And uh, uh, like suppose uh, if you want to uh, search with a username of Emma Watson, but it is uh, only limited to the Twitter uh, Twitter analysis. So you have to know that Twitter. Uh, handle of the person now you can see here in the map uh, this gives the information about the uh, users uh, followed um, map location of users emma watson follows okay so you can see there are very few people emma watson follows so uh, these are the locations of those like four from india or uh, two from turkey uh, five from uh, sweden and things then uh, it also gave us the analysis that uh, uh, most active hours you, uh, for users, uh, Emma Watson follows, uh, whenever the Emma Watson follow, whoever the persons in the world, uh, what time he, uh, he will uh, be most active according to the uh, times. Uh, like if you can see that uh, uh, accounts from five to eight percent of the average day from 7.30 to 8.29 p.m. Then we have the highest uh, from 9.30 p.m. to 10.29 p.m., which is in the night. So to just to know your uh, and most active hours of Emma Watson, uh, uh, when she used uh, her activities, uh, 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 what is the, uh, you can say what is the habit or what is the time she uses the Twitter most. So according um, and uh, it governs the data according to our time zone that is uh, currently Asian Calcutta, uh, Asia Calcutta time zone. So uh, uh, about uh, and also gives the, you the analysis that how many she retweeted it, yellow uh, remarks about the retweets, uh, light green uh, tells about the contact tweets and green about the tweets and uh, which are not contacted. So and what are the type of words she uh, majorly uses in her uh, uh, in her posts or the tweets like uh, Instagram uh, writer, feminist and founder. So these type of things that uh, uh, you can get uh, uh, information about your target and uh, just to plan any sort of attack. So something like that. A, a lot of information is there, like total tweets of Emma Watson follows users. You can get a brief analysis and then maybe you can um, Found the vulnerability of one of her uh, Twitter uh, friends' Twitter account, and uh, you can hack them and then uh, spread the infection to uh, Emma Watson's account also. So it's just uh, basically uh, to know uh, your target. Now the uh, uh, another type of footprinting uh, we have also is that network footprinting. So in network footprinting, what we have is that we try to uh, map out the topologies of all the um, you can see packets. Uh, uh, does anyone uh, want to tell me about the topologies? What are network topologies? Do you have any ideas? Kriti, Rohit, do you know what is network topology? Ishita? This is this type of a discussion. Uh, you can say whatever uh, you have ideas, uh, whatever the information you have. Mom, like bus uh, and uh, ring topology, bus topology, tree topology, system of connect. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you have tell me the uh, types of the topologies. So uh, yes, uh, do anyone? also have the idea what is topology basically 
how we structure our uh, in devices with the network devices uh, it's a, uh, a structural uh, architecture of the network yes so uh, when we talk about the topology uh, basically when we uh, talk that uh, we are in a network okay so we can see that uh, uh, let's just uh, see on the google um, So if you can see here, uh, these are the types of network topologies we have. Network topology, it means it is a, a sense or the manner in which uh, all the devices, uh, it can be uh, uh, your laptop, your uh, mobile phones, your computer or your desktop, uh, which are connected uh, with a network in some sort of way to uh, get a proper connection. So uh, if you can see that point to point network that two devices only connected to a single wire, uh, there is a bus topology and uh, uh, in a single wire uh, from those wires, all the devices are connected in and in the ring topology, all the devices are connected in the ring manner. Store, star topology uh, from a single device, all the devices are then connected. So each topologies have uh, one of their significance and uh, uh, one of their specialities, cons and trons. So um, whenever the packet, uh, uh, we can say that we are in network and uh, we query some information uh, uh, from the browsers when you Google out something. So basically uh, your network, uh, whatever the network vendor you have, uh, like uh, what are, uh, if you're using the broadband services, uh, geo broadband services, uh, then uh, geo has been, uh, uh, must have uh, created some sort of uh, ease. Uh, uh, they are following some sort of network topologies uh, to make the connection proper. So um, whenever the data packets leaves your computer and go to the uh, other computer, uh, so uh, they follow a lot of, uh, they go through these wires. They don't just go and uh, pack, uh, travels in the uh, thin air, you can see that, and they, uh, travel through these wires and uh, these wires uh, uh, are connected in some sort of a uh, way or manner from which they can hop around. And um, because uh, in a network, we can say that uh, um, a network is connected uh, from a lot of things. It is made up of some lot of things like uh, switch, doctors, and these are the devices uh, who together uh, perform a network. Uh, like there is a, uh, let's just see a network. Here that it is a network diagram and uh, we have this internet and then it is uh, connected to the cable modem and then the wireless router. So these are the devices which are uh, used to, um, uh, you can say that uh, connect your networks across the computers uh, from the server uh, to you uh, or uh, you can say that whatever the services providers and uh, network providers you have and they, uh, because, uh, internet uh, flows through the wires and then uh, go to, you can use then these type of wireless routers to access, uh, you can see they are the uh, behave as an access point like Wi-Fi to, uh, from which you can connect your networks. And uh, whenever the packet leaves your computer, he you just follow this route and uh, then go to this device. Uh, it will go to your broadband. Then it will uh, travel through your, um, whatever the fiber net you are using and then to the routers then a uh, router will gonna tell uh, that okay you have to uh, follow uh, this route uh, it have less traffic something like that so like if you can see here uh, there is a router a wireless router uh, it will uh, tell you data packet that okay uh, you have to use this uh, uh, route because it has less traffic and um, it is more uh, sort of a precise uh, way and router also manages all the traffic. So these um, network packets, uh, when they travel from your computer to uh, the server, they just uh, follow some sort of path and along uh, by analyzing those paths that whatever the network you are uh, 
your network is following you can just um, create in topology you can ha have an idea of that topology that what type of topology um, is uh, present in that network that we are uh, that we are connected or that we are using so if you can see in the screenshot i have used a command like uh, tracer uh, so tracer is just a, a command uh, that we can use in the windows platform windows cmd uh, and then give the url name and it uh, it will uh, give us all the uh, you can say all the uh, basically a whole route from uh, where uh, your network packet leave, uh, leave your system and then whatever the paths he had been followed uh, he uh, to uh, reach to the server uh, if you can see cmd Using the terminal uh, which is present in the Windows uh, operating system, and for using the tracer, uh, I have to give the command. Test my data. So it will start it to uh, give me the, uh, you can say uh, all uh, sort of uh, IP addresses uh, and uh, network addresses uh, it has been, uh, it has followed uh, to uh, reach to the server. By analyzing these, uh, you can um, have some idea uh, sort of uh, for the topology and uh, you can use this information to plan your attack in the network if you want to uh, attack on the whole network. Now, if you can see that uh, that uh, when this is my IP uh, system's IP address, then it will go uh, to the another um, Delhi uh, zone. Uh, uh, you can see its IP address here. Then it's in Mumbai, and then it's further. It's will gonna um, go on more. So. It will give you the idea of uh, the topology we are using. Now the next tool is Bill Cipher. So Bill Cipher is just an information gathering tool for a website or an IP address. So you can see all sort of information in the Bill Cipher. Uh, let's just see it again. Uh, runs in the uh, parrot terminal. So if you use su and then python 3 uh, this tool is has been also developed in python 3 like the Sherlock and the Harvester. can see that uh, this is the uh, 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 interface of that tool uh, now it is asking that are you want to collect the information of any website on an ip address let's suppose i want to uh, collect the uh, information about the website uh, like uh, you just type the name of that website emd dot dot edu
sorry uh, i have to enter that website and then the address now you can see that uh, there is a lot of options a uh, lot of type of uh, uh, types of information that we can get from this tool like ip locator wherever the uh, location of the ip address its do domain names is geo ip uh, location and then the uh, whatever the ports it is using then also the host information and uh, email also uh, if that website has the email it can also gather the inf uh, email uh, from that url so uh, now it is asking that what information would you like to collect now uh, if i want to uh, know about this uh, you can see sub uh, gainus uh, information now if you can see that uh, what uh, information is uh, presented here it, it is uh, giving up all the uh, domain names ip addresses and uh, things and uh, next if i want to just try uh, try email gathering of this website let's just see it is available or not uh, like 15 uh, 15 for the email gathering So it is uh, now searching for the e all the available emails. Uh, it will search through all the websites. Uh, I have some firewall issues that uh, so it is not working right now. But uh, you can use these tools. So um, basically, what we have seen that we can use all these uh, type of tools to gather the information to know our uh, victim and just to outline that uh, outline uh, prepare the outline of our. Uh, plan of the attack and uh, now it is a uh, most important part of the session that uh, ways to reduce your digital footprinting because you are using the internet and you are using the social media platforms so uh, it is obvious that uh, you are leaving your digital footprintings everywhere and uh, maybe it can get compromised uh, somehow if those uh, uh, websites or platforms where wherever you have used your web uh, you can say email addresses and login information or credit card details it get compromised then your details are also going to compromise so these are the some uh, ways or practices that you can choose up uh, to uh, just uh, uh, reduce the number of digital footprintings so uh, it, the first point is that delete or deactivate old shopping or social network accounts so whatever the inactive accounts or the shopping platforms like a uh, Flipkart or Amazon, if you have an uh, account on them and you are not using it right now, so you can delete it and um, deactivate those accounts so that uh, if that uh, platforms get compromised, your data will not uh, uh, get uh, listed in the breach or, or not uh, go on the sale on the dark web. Now you can use the uh, every time you can use incognito mode or you can use even browsers like Tor so uh using incognito mode uh, you you can prevent yourself from the online trackers uh whenever you browse anything a uh, lot of online trackers are uh, active on the internet they just track your all the information they just track your all the cookies and things uh just to know and using those trackings they will uh, send you ads in advertisements like that or maybe they can send you adware so adware is a type of malware which is injected in the advertisements so deactivate all the email accounts if you have any check your privacy uh, settings so avoid to make your social media um, accounts public because uh, in web scrapping uh, the first uh, uh, users who have uh, uh, the public accounts they get compromised very easily because in web scrapping we just uh, what we do we just uh, scrap out all the information basically it is a type of information gathering all the accounts in the world and then uh, sell it on the dark web and uh, uh, if, uh, and uh, whoever buys those information he can use uh, your details or logins to perform uh, further hack hacking activities or he can also use in um, your login and details uh, to perform any sort of illegal activities. 
then we have next the ask for website to remove your database directly so if you don't want to uh, you are not using the website uh, now and uh, you are uh, you were using the website in the past and uh, you feel that uh, okay they have my data now so you can uh, email them uh, on their help desk and uh, ask them to okay just remove my all the databases uh, 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 all my related information from your database okay so use false burner uh, information uh, so this is very useful uh, to uh, useful point that i uh, also personally use that uh, sometimes you go to the websites and they ask you to give the information so uh, when you log in or uh, you sign up uh, to uh, their uh, website and then they will available the perform uh, available all the information that you want to get so what you can do is just you can create a fake profile and how you can get that you can just um, use the online tools like temp mail so these temp mails are a sort of a website who generate a temporary mail from you they are not the authenticated mail addresses then um, you can uh, like uh, if you see that uh, there is a uh, mail id so i can just use this mail id and uh, 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 enter in that whatever the page is asking for to sign up their services or to log in and then just create it. And if they uh, ask that to activate for activation of account, go and click them. You can, uh, if they send any mail, you get uh, the mail here uh, in this um, uh, section of the page and uh, you can approve it from here. So what happened is that uh, you are just using a fake profile and you are uh, not giving your personal information, not giving your personal data to the, uh, a website or uh, login websites so uh, and then don't click on daft service so it is also very important uh, the daft service are those services like uh, uh, maybe you have a c on the social media platforms that uh, uh, click on this link and uh, usually it will it was a time that uh, on uh, facebook we can uh, usually uh, usually see that there are some links on which it is written that uh, 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 fill this form and uh, get uh, rate your personality we will rate your personality or we will tell about your personality dot uh, and uh, these type of things so what you will do uh, they just uh, give uh, when you click on the website uh, form just get opened and uh, you entered all your information like your name what are your likes uh, what uh, things you don't like and sort of things and then they will just uh, randomly generate some sort of result and you have you feel that okay uh, he have uh, give me the my uh, uh, personality uh, uh, traits uh, whatever uh, this name's personality traits so uh, further um, what is the advantage of those information to that uh, uh, data server is that uh, they will sell your information then to the advice uh, advertisement agencies then those agencies will uh, use you as a data point and then they will uh, create a profile person persona of you that he will like this and he will like this on your social media uh, they will uh, gonna send you all sort of uh, advertisements uh, according to your likes or don't likes or the uh, post or the artic uh, articles so um, th this is very serious because uh, um, if you heard uh, recently um, in the last us elections when trump got elected uh, we have a, a news that uh, um, there is some uh, sort of a um, you can say disturbance uh, there is some uh, illegal activities uh, contained uh, while the voting system is uh, just not fair in the us elections so it just uh, not something like that uh, people have uh, voted uh, uh, anonymously increase the vote of the trump um, there is a, a organization uh, which is name of Cambridge Analytica of the UK and that uh, organization just uses these type of surveys from the Facebooks and uh, from the Instagram and uh, then they use this information to create the uh, uh, personal persona profiles of every citizen of the US. About 80% of the US population have uh, uh, 
uh, their vote uh, ideas or choosing the vote rights are uh, ideology get disturbed by these uh, companies because they use the data science techniques further and they uh, sort of created the uh, per data points on each person and then according to their likes and don't uh, don't likes like uh, if somewhere they are the um, uh, they are the person who just likes uh, Trump somewhere, then what uh, he will, uh, that agency will do. He will just uh, post, uh, share the posted on their profile, like uh, Trump is a good man, Hillary is a, a, a not good candidate for the America and something like that sort of data points. And um, it's just uh, when you see a lot of negative, uh, uh, you can say negative post about someone, uh, it is, a uh, just it, it's in the human nature that you will uh, create some sort of a persona that uh, idea that uh, he's that person is not good and he's a suitable candidate. So they just manipulated the people's uh, ideology using data science and business intelligence and the uh, hacking techniques and web service and combination of these uh, major areas of the computer science. They just uh, 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 disturb the all the voting system of the world's biggest economic uh, country. So uh, these are the most, uh, um, just user don't pay always the attention of these type of things, but the uh, our data is very uh, sensitive for uh, ourselves. And uh, after that, uh, uh, that got just discovered about the Cambridge Analytica. Uh, it faced the legal charges from the uh, word, uh, word uh, uh, that is a, code, a word court and, uh, then uh, the uh, company got bankrupted also. Uh, so you have to always uh, try to uh, reduce your digital footprintings, um, always pay attention wherever you are giving your information. And when you don't uh, need those resources, you can just ask them out to remove my information. So yeah, uh, that's it for today. And uh, from tomorrow, we will, um, uh, we will see all the tools and uh, practical labs about uh, for the uh, faces of the hacking that is scanning networks and uh, then gaining access and things from the upcoming sessions. So anything that you want to ask or any of you, any type of doubt, you can ask now. I would say that uh, you guys uh, will try uh, these uh, tools in your system also, and then uh, come back and let me know that how was your experience about someone who you uh, gathered the information about. And uh, maybe uh, it is, it's a fun uh, thing uh, to uh, know about uh, someone, but uh, just uh, that's all for today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you.